Give me a moment. Give me a moment. There we are. Beautiful. Here's our music loves. All right. So today, unless something goes horribly awry in this last chapter, uh, today will be our final Dial Town playthrough, unless they add more like characters at some point. But we are going to be playing Chapter Three. Um, I barely, and by barely, I mean barely know anything about Chapter Three. I think the dateable's name is Norm. I think. But, we shall see, my loves. We shall see. And from what I've seen, like, if it is the character I think, he looks goofy as heck, so I'm excited. Because I like goofy characters. Also, I hotkeyed a bunch of my seeds onto my number pad so that I could, you know, switch a room between them all. So that's exciting. Um, beyond that, I don't really have much planned. I don't know how long this is going to take, but we will be playing it to its fruition, to its natural end, you know? Um, and as far as tomorrow, tomorrow we'll probably just, to take a break, we'll probably go into um, Minecraft Hypixel, just because, like, that doesn't require a lot of thought or anything. Um, so, yeah, that should be tomorrow's game. Keyword being should. Oh, my goodness, sorry, I'm stretching. And I hope y'all stick around with me for, you know, my other content. I'm not just purely a Dial Town streamer. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, so I'm excited about that. And I'm excited to get my voice a rest again and such. Probably the next time, unless I find another, like, text-driven game. Uh, you are first, uh, Fuzzy. But, um, un unless I find another text-driven game, it's going to be a little bit before I get into another one like this. I will say, there is a very small, and I mean very small, part of me that kind of wants to buy and play Dog and Rampa's series. I, I don't know, maybe it's just because, like, I want to try to play it for myself. But here's the reason I say a small part. I know I'd get really frustrated. I know for a fact that that game would drive me insane. Um, ooh, nice. Honestly, I would probably have a more fun time playing the Phoenix Wright series. That might actually be a really good series. Anyway, uh, let's get into it, loves. Uh, here we go. Look at that. No hesitation at all. All fancy. All right. Let's see. Pop, pop. New game. Alright. Okay, so we've done the four, and we've unlocked... Okay, yeah, I think the character that I've seen the picture of is correct. Oh boy, here we go. I'm assuming I get to go through... Yeah, okay. Oh, this is a little different. Um, let's go with logo. Because, again, it's all relevant to me. Do you want to be a phone or a typewriter? I'm gonna be a third. Alright. Other. This is intimidating. What is that? Hello? <laughs> okay, we're at Mayor Mingus' office. Okay. Thank you all for showing up to yet another essential meeting of the mingling. As I'm sure you're all aware, a humble council for concerned citizens is made up of Dial Town's most powerful and noteworthy residents. Let me see if I can read that note. Rules for the meeting. No hooting, no hollering, no yeeting, and no yaunting. That sound is like right in the back of my ear and it's freaking me out. Presiding over this meeting is none other than yours truly, the shrewd and devilishly cunning mayor of Dial Town, Miss Mingus Crown. Hi. Hey, boss. Sup, bozos. Wait, 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 wait. Why, well, hang on. Sup, bozos. Why was... That, that is 100% Little Billy. Why is Little Billy here? I heard that. I fucking heard that. When I figure out which one of you... Moving on. Before we get into our pressing business, I'll conduct a quick head count... 
Little Billy, Kicker of Shins by Trevangles, The Bane of Dial Town's Alleys, Public Schools and Playgrounds. Fucking hell. What the fuck was that? Rotary Christ, do you know how sensitive a cat's hearing is? I think that's why I did. Are you asking if this is the voice time I've streaked directly into a cat's ear? Bit of a stupid question, that. You see, this is why we invite you here. You're too dangerous to have in our opposition's hands. Yeah, and it's real swell. Being feared rocks, you know? You think that's news to me? <laughs> Being feared's half of my whole job, you little brat. I'm a Machia Machiavellian little scamp. How the hell do you... <laughs> Who taught you that word? How do you know what the fuck Machiavellian is? I know I cut education by 50% across the board last year, so it couldn't have been at school. Ah, uh, no matter. Moving on. Theodore Russell Belt, a zoo master and allegedly famed explorer of the Cager of Beasts, the Jailer of Zebras, and what? Hello, and yes, bully to the lot of you. Glad to be back. What? And what might that be? Standing on the table in front of you, it's a swan. None other than the Cygnus Dial Townus, the noble Dial Town native swan. I can clearly see that it's a swan, the Aurora. I meant, what was it? Why on earth would you drag a feral paw, Damien, into our meeting? She seems docile enough. She's about to attack someone. Well, is she toilet trained? Why, the whole world a toilet in some way or another. This town might be, maybe. <laughs> Again, why the swan theorem? Oh, don't tell me it's... Why, for show and tell, of course. I don't think we have... Every meeting. Every meeting? Okay, we have a lot to go over, so I'm just going to move on. Can that... The swan can save you, she's talking right now. Right, and uh, yes, bully to that. Fantastic. Next up, Shooty and Stabby are representatives from the oh so feared Dialtown Mob. Wait, people are actually afraid of us now? That's news to me. We did it, bro. We hit the big leagues. Real criminals now. We're real criminals. All those fabricated headlines about us that the mayor bribed the press to the publish to publish must have finally paid off. Oh hell yeah, bro. If only Park could see me now. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm seeing this as like a little weird mouth, like a little like mm, like a turtle mouth. <laughs> anyway. If only Park could see me now. Yes, yes. Most people that you two mug swindle and steal from tend to be positively terrified of you both. Well, specifically terrified of accidentally knocking either of you two over, mid-mugging. You know, in case you bang your head on the pavement and they get convicted for bad slaughter. Wait, people think we aren't an ominous force to be reckoned with? Outside of them being grievously harmed, what am I, henchmen, and... Eliciting my divine slash feline wrath. The not even remotely. But 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 we're the mob. We got connections. You have exactly one connection, which happens to be me, a figure who so dial town citizens are actually afraid of, and for good reason. We we could be scary. Uh, we we could be scary. Uh, if you can, I've yet to see it. W watch this, bozos. Oh. oh. How's that for intimidating, huh? Who did he just shoot? I'm sure I'd be positively quivering if your gun was actually loaded. Oh, it just went off, okay. Now put ba that thing back where you found it. Don't even think about picking it back up while I'm addressing you. Shit, bro. I told you that these lousy blanks just don't have the same effect. Mayor, can we have some bullets? 
You know, in case we need to ice someone for ya. Uh, 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 can I have another gun to decide? Sharpener stabbing knife? Or a sharper stabbing knife? This one's gotten awfully dull for me to use. For me using it to slice my sandwiches during lunchtime. No, we've been over this. You'll only hurt yourselves if you're given real weapons. Now, moving on. Next member, Abel Brannigan, the violator of OSHA regulations and sole proprietor of the Dialtown Fun Fair, the most recklessly, recklessly run fun fair in America. Uh, what voice do I give you? I might want to give you a Connie voice, or like something like that, yeah. Next to Baboon World over in Nevada, anyway. Nevada, whatever. I feel like with the Megatone screaming and the sword and the gunshot, I can't really live up to the standard that's been set up so far. Like, what am I gonna pull a Ferris wheel out of my ass? I'd be immensely impressed if you could, but a basic introduction would suffice. Alright then. Hello all. Glad to- I'm gonna kill little Billy. Theoror, please take the mega megaphone from the boy. Thank you, Theoror. Alright, thank you. Moving on. Do I get to finish by? No. Next, we have the one and only God who's selling it for our dear comrade Buddy. Uh, the owner of Buddy's Burgers off of Main Street. Also, he's a hobo and woke up face down in a puddle this morning. Wait a minute. Do I own the Buddy's Burgers? No, hobo. You own nary a house, hovel, cottage, bungalow, trailer, nor gazebo in my city. And really have no societal power at all. You'd honestly done very little to warrant anyone having much respect or admiration for you. I mean, I did kind of create the universe though, right? Ironic. Yes, and we're all still tremendously upset with you for doing so. Oh shucks. So, wait. What am I even doing here then? Because, as you'll recall, Buddy got flattened by a rogue fortune-telling amusement park cabinet. So, and we needed someone short notice. I'm gonna say, because this has been quite a decent chunk of talking so far. I know it's barely into it, but still. Alright, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. And believe me, you cannot get more short notice, notice than a man walking around, carrying a sign saying, We'll do a cart food, or cartwheel for dog food. Ah, Coolio, Coolio. Honestly, sitting in a heated room and talking politicals and junk. Politics? Yeah, sure, whatever. It's a hell of a lot easier than doing a cartwheel, let me tell you. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I can't do a cartwheel, actually. Oh, oh my god. My side was fraudulent. I just wanted the dog food. I was really hoping someone would pay me before demanding to see the cartwheel. Wait, you created the entire universe, and yet, the ability to perform a simple cartwheel that eludes you? Simple? Have you ever tried to do one, huh? They're really hard. They can be, yeah. Shut up. Right then, now that we're all present at the counter pool, we can begin. I hereby officially declare this meeting of the mingling now in session. I need to hydrate. I hope you had a relatively pleasant journey here, despite the dismal weather. You summoned the child to town hall on a school night and expected them to skateboard here in the middle of a th thunderstorm. Alright. Uh. Ha! Huh. I'm shutting Billy up. Hush, stunted one. So I'm controlling Mingus. Okay, interested. And with that juvenile outburst appropriately discarded, we can begin. Now then, you all know why we've gathered here. 
Nah, I don't. Ugh. Quiet, you. Abel, wheel the projector over here and start the slideshow. Is it Big Bertha? It is Big Bertha. Yes, folks. We're here to discuss none other than the Green Menace. They're talking about me. Logo. The egg layer. This cloud. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, the bozo. Ah, yeah, the green one. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure you're all well acquainted with this emerald entity. That's such a sweet title for me. Thank you. In the past 12 months, we caught Logo. Laying eggs on private property. Harassing Dial Town's public. Oh, shit, that be. Exposing Dial Town's public to vulgar cinema. Convincing Dial Town's most reliable bag teller to skip town so she can paint pointless mountains. Befriending the fugitive known as Bigfoot. Stealing the rug from my office. I did do that. And possibly worst of all. Fraternizing with Randy J. Poss I will fight you. I will fight you for Randy's honor. Possibly the worst citizen of Dial Town. Wait, how is hanging out with Randy the worst thing co to come out of the stuff that you just mentioned? Oh, isn't it true? It isn't truly. I just personally find that last one particularly repulsive. As you all know, Dial Dia Town has a status quo which acts as the backbone of our robust, inclusive, but civilized society. On that I that we have toiled strenuously to protect. As mayor, I have made sizable strides in recreating the dial town that existed under my grandfather's leadership. A town of prosperity, order, and hope. A utopia, really. But, as I'm sure you know, when one attempts to compare the dial town of my grandfather's time to the dial town of today, you inevitably run into a, uh, discrepancy. A greed discrepancy. Simply put, Logo isn't just a threat to our society. I don't know why I'm putting, like, ah, on the end of things. But a threat to normality itself. Normality's overrated, babes. They are the final hurdle in recreating the dial town that existed in 1966. Uh, there's more than just uh, one or two hurdles to going back to the 60s. Let, let's not mince words here. I'm doing you a favor, honey. 1966 being the year of the dial-up. The year my grandfather changed the whole world for the better. Simply put, Logo must be promptly disposed of. I'd say, why don't we just lock them back up in the zoo? I think that's a bully idea, don't you? Uh... If I'm playing as Mayor Mingus, it makes the most sense to hear him out. So, zoo-oriented contain orientated containments is your pitch, then? Epic idea, little mustache McGee. Till mustache McGee forgets to lock the pen door and they get out and run amok again. They are, I insist. Our vertically impaired friend simply doesn't understand the scientific benefits of studying Logo up close. The experimental potential is limitless. Hey now, you don't think that I want to shove a bunch of firecrackers up their ass? May I change seats, please? One much further away from this dwarfed fiend, ideally. Beside, if we're to worry about a potential escape, why not post our guards at the zoo's gates? What do you think armed guards just grow on trees, Theodore? They don't. They don't grow on trees, Theodore. Besides, the only two surplus lackeys I have at my disposal currently are these two buffoons. And they couldn't prevent a Kiwi from escaping in a containment breach. But what class is it? The bird or the fruit? 
I can't see you having much luck containing either. But you see, we'd be able to contain all kinds of weird looking brutes and boys if we had the proper weapons, Miss Crown. Hey, bozos, if you want some real firepower, come see me after the. Don't you dare, Hat Pint. You know they'll only hurt themselves. That's their prerogative. You guys are making you guys are making this way too complicated. I say we just bonk him over the head with a shovel, you know, buried out in the woods. A quick wham bam thank you, ma'am. And they're out of your hands for good. Right, until a wild boar, that being me, unburies them, and suddenly we they've tamed a boar. Yeah, they certainly have tamed me. If we can't contain a mountainous logo, what can we hope to do if they are riding a boar? Ah, uh, this is all too hard and pointless. Why don't we just eat a burger out of the nearest dumpster and call it a night? I vote we do that. Inaction simply isn't an option. Let me save. I've gone through a couple of choices. Hopefully we can get back to me soon so that I can stop doing so many voices. Look, you all have something to gain from Logo's exile. Billy, is it not Logo who is indirectly responsible for the conversion of the Dial Town Cinema into an 18-only sphere house? Yeah, cutting me off from thy favorite person to torture the whole city. You leave Rolliver alone. Fact. I can't steal the fucker's feds if I can't get to him now, can I? They're all with Logo out of the picture. You'd be free to recapture and study the elusive Bigfoot, undisturbed. Fine, Joe. Think of what I could deduce from the new first apples alone. Stabby, shooty, by pulling this job off successfully, you'll have proven yourselves worthy of the right cove. Enforcer. Dial Town's populace will know that you two must be feared, and for good reason, as you'll be directly re uh, responsible for executing my will. We'll, we'll be qualified for. I, I mean, yeah, of course. We'll be qualified to act as your voices. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to us, Miss Crowd. Abel. No more egg shit at your fun fair. Fantastic. And God. You're being paid in dog food to warm your seat. Thanks. You too. As a committee, we're, wait, we're a committee? Hang on, I didn't see what she said. As a committee of concerned citizens, the mingling is. Wait, we're a committee? I figured we were, uh, I don't know. An evil league of villainous feeds is some drivel to that effect. <laughs> Let's gaslight God. And you joined an evil society without complaint? Hey. Free dog food. No, we are not an evil league. Legion, squad, team, bad, or anything of the sort. W what made you even think that we were? Well, for one, we'll meet in during a thunderstorm. I don't control the clouds. Yet. I can't try as I may. You. You can control the weather. If you don't like it, you turn the thunder off. Tight slash weather clear. Hey, I'm fine with it. Just saying. Oh, and also the matching Poipal thing that you got going on with your outfits. And the over presence of Poipal in the room. Coincidental. We're also meeting in a building that's essentially just a gigantic version of your own head. Also... There's a tiny golden replica of your head on top of your cane. Also, the fact that you have a cane to begin with is pretty damning. Uh, when I have to walk for long distances, I need a cane, so, like, I ain't. Do you want the rest of your dog food or not? I'll be good, ma'am. Excellent. Now, on to the capture itself. They're all. I'll need a cat carrier. The one you brought uh, with the sword here in will suffice. Shooty and Stabby will take care of the rest. How are we gonna get them into it, Miss Crowd? Yeah, I see that fucker up close, and they look like they scratch, and possibly bite. 
I can confirm I do both. <laughs> oh, don't worry, you two. I think you'll find my method of subduing them to be most effective. Are you gonna send me in like a hot date and that's how you're gonna get me? Holy hell, chat. Okay. Give me a second. If anything, I'm gonna happy to be happy to just, you know, take a moment. Also, um, if you wanna know what I named the player when I did the proper Karen run, I went ahead and just went with the standard player name. Uh, because I was, I knew I wanted to use Logo for my final one, since I used Logan for my first. I was either going to use Logan or Logo, but anyway. Ah, what a beautiful spring morning. Hang on a moment. What do we have here? Hmm. Yeah, we got food. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sniffing in my ears. Egads, a full English breakfast just for me? An American? This is wonderful. What a windfall. Logo, I wouldn't eat that. Nah, it's good. No, I really don't think it is. The food's green, man. They're rarely That's rarely good. Yeah, but I'm green, so, like, that checks out. Ha, what? <laughs> I. There's audible malicious giggling coming from just outside the tent. That's obviously some kind of ruse. That's cool. That's cool. For crying out loud, it's clearly a human skull on the plate. I disagree. Please, Logo, for once in your miserable life, exercise the slightest bit of self-control. I've decided that I'm going to devour the breakfast. You know, just in case. Are we about to have gross eating sounds? Just in case what? Yep, well, not too bad. Did I eat the plate? You had no... <laughs> you had no reason to eat the plate. Mmm, it's bueno. You sicken me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got... Logo. Uh, no es bueno. There we go, chat. We're gone. It's a bad big this place. Well, that was easy. Yeah, honestly, hardest part was just getting them to bend into the shape that have been in the carrier. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Ophelia can be kind of strict. We're not dealing with an extraordinarily crafty opponent, gentlemen. I would have been immensely concerned if you two had managed to screw this up literally in any aspect. So, you two get to live for another day. The precious gift of life, bro. Hell yeah. Hey, if you're so happy to be alive that this guy's responsible for that, he could really use some change. Come on, brother. Surely you can spare just one lousy dime. You're God, you can make them! Miss Crown, do we really need this bozo here? That's my- what's my official title, Miss Maya? Seat Warmer. Technically, he's doing exactly what I hired him for. What matters is that Logo happily took our insultingly conspicuous bit. And I still can't believe that they did, as gullible as the fucker may be. The eggs were bright green. Well, stubby one, the eggs actually also happen to be bright green. I'm actually unsure if they know that they're not meant to be that color. But they must have had at least noticed the peculiarity of the green bacon or tomato, right? Maybe they're blind, like a mole. I can't confirm my eyesight is dog shit. This could bode well for us. What I don't get is why they could have got for something more visually subtle. Uh, yeah, let's hear her able out. 
Sure, that we could have just uh, stuck in a few sleeping pills with the beads and bobs your uncle there down. Ah, you see, if you'd studied the creature's diet as I have, you'd know that it'd be a fool's errand. It may surprise you to find out that our specimen primarily feeds on a rigorous diet of gravel and horse jerky. And of course, washes it all down with copious amounts of cough syrup. Alas, the creature's biological acclimation to narcotics made of tranquilization, made tranquilization, arduous to say the least. Why does he talk like that? Buddy, you and me both. I don't know why I gave him that voice. It's very similar to the one I do for Papyrus, just a lot more pompous. Because Papyrus is like up here. Well, he, he wouldn't say here. He, Papyrus is up here. He's very... Eh, you know? Who the fuck says alas? I do. Alasses and bullies aside, the mustachioed one brought up an apt point. Who says apt? I had to be certain that our dismal meal would reliably incapacitate the green one. Lest they wake up mid-transport escape and scurry under a parked car or down a toilet. You think I'm that flexible? Slip down a toilet? Really? I mean, I used to do gymnastics, but Jesus Christ, I ain't that flexible anymore. I'm almost 30. <laughs> Abel, I've seen this thing spryly emerge from our treacherous sewers, completely unscathed. A gutter-dwelling rat can crush its own spine to fit into narrow crevices. Can we really take any chances here? Well, it's less so that they can crush their spines, and it's more so that they can fit into anything that their head can fit through, much like cats. So, they's in the kitty prison. Drugged all hell, and you're gonna send them to a nice big farm where you'll have plenty of room to run around. Oh. Interesting. Uh, typo error. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Our mission is far from over. Thank you so much for the follow flower petal. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, dear heart. You see, based on, um, several formal complaints that I have received from one of Abel's former employees, is this all just from Ticket Jerry? Oh my god, this is all just from Ticket Jerry. <laughs> That's funny. We can deduce that logo is batshit crazy and will simply not take the hint. Our specimen's frankly revolting level of persistence unfortunately leaves my hands very much tied. The mingling must remain vigilant and squash any of logo's inevitable attempts to s return to our civilized world. By any means necessary. I'll make you proud. Paw, paw. Just you see. She's pretty. I do wish we could have romanced her. I wish we could romance everyone, though. Specifically Tango. Alright. Jesus fucking Christ. Chapter 3. Well, shit. Are we just encrypted out of the woods? By the way, how did we get a watch? Alright, my loves. Let us see. All right, let's save. All right, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> where am I? Am I dead? Is this heaven? I highly doubt I would be behind bars in heaven. No, too small, too cramped. Hell, perhaps? No, not really red enough. Limbo? Nah, this doesn't look like a vast doctor's waiting room. Plus, no lukewarm coffee or elevator music. Purgatory, final answer. Well, by my estimation, you've been stuffed into a cat carrier, which has, in turn, been abandoned in the middle of the woods. That is also likely, yeah. Uh... I need a squirt. Ew. Not in a confined space. Not in a confined space! Uh, I feel like my head's full of jumping spiders, all of which are holding boom boxes. Who could have foreseen this abject misfortune coming? I've warned you. 90% of the time, once given a free breakfast, you've been inducted into a militia cult or been kidnapped to have your organs extracted and sold. That, or you've just woken up, having overstayed your welcome after some really mediocre schmicks. 
by process of elimination, it was bound to be one of the other three. You got off lucky. Uh, Baba wants out. Cool. So, stick your fingers out to the bars and undo the latches on the carrier's door. Confused ape noises. Just stick your fingers... Uh, just stick your fingers out to the door and fiddle with the four latches on the outside corners of the... Even more confused ape noises. Oh, for the love of... Crafty house cats can figure this out, you know. Just... Uh, uh, thrash around to the carrier breaks into cons its constituent pieces then, I guess. Here we go. There it is. We're free. Well, that could have been worse. Considering that you're not short exactly one kidney or aboard an alien spacecraft, I'd say that you're right. Uh, why do you think that they didn't take my kidneys? Are my organs inadequate? Maybe they cut, you, cut into you with a scalpel and saw that your kidneys were green and, uh, I don't know, maybe it spooked them. Are your kidneys green? Yes. No. I don't know. Is that what happened? Well, I don't know. Reach behind you and see if you have any scars. Hmm. No, but I do have a, a note stapled to my spine. Ow. All right, yeah. Those usually contain some strongly worded information. Go ahead, read it. Don't come... Huh, the note seems to say... Okay, I'm gonna read it, because he can't. Don't come back. I mean it. Don't even try it. I mean it. I really mean it. I mean it. Don't come back. I mean it. Oh, God damn it. I swear if you come back. I swear. I swear. Love, Mamingus. Ah, oh, shit. That's right. I can't read. I have no clue what this says. Wait. M-I-N-G-U-S. I know that specific combination of hieroglyphics from the mayoral campaign posters. Probably couldn't read it, but we call those letters, but go on. Yeah, that's the cat lady, you know, the one with the cane. Politics push push. Don't make me say politics push push ever again. Great job. Never call her that in my presence again. Thank you, narrator. Oh, Jesus, that I cannot read. Huh, there's more on the back, too. Shit, I'm gonna guess I'm not gonna find out why I'm here. I see the word creator, I think. Oh my god. I'm trying to read it, but anyway, bummer. Alright, may I make a worthwhile suggestion? Voice in my head, can't you read? Wander out into the woods and keep walking till you drop dead. Okay, yeah, that seems to be my best move right now. Alright, ready on my BRB screen, just in case. I believe it is... Two? Anyway. Oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. Hello, Flower Petal. Welcome, dear heart. I'm good. We are just playing this exceedingly weird but delightful game called Dial Town. I'm stretching. Give me a moment and I'm going to hydrate a little bit. Most. Ugh, that sounded weird. Let's not casually gargle water while we talk. <laughs> that sounded really weird. <laughs> like that weird sound that Ethan made at some point in uh, Una's Honest video. <laughs> the eh, ah, ah, sound. <laughs> I don't even watch, and I know about that. Anyway, let us continue, my darlings. Oh, woe is me. Ah, fuck. I am wandering through these desolate trees all alone. I am a lost little creature left to die alone in the snow. It's not even snowing. It isn't snowing. Ah, fuck. Ah, please cease the weeping and the wanting. No, no, I shan't. Please, you'll wear yourself out and fall unconscious. Okay, never mind. Feel free to hasten the inevitable. Actually, if you want to really speed things up, then you should jog on the spot while you're screaming. Lose up that last little bit of juice in that water hued husk of a body. Okay. I know, I, I adore this game. <laughs> Woe is me. Jog in your place. <laughs> ah, fuck, sprint to place. Like, I like exceptionally weird games. Hello. Look at Jackie! Logo. Is that. Ticket Jerry? My truest and greatest ally and friend! Th th that's not. 
Okay, sure, all right. What are you doing out here? Oh, I'm just on my way back to my pasture. Pastured? Pasture. I'm a shepherd now, remember? Ticket Jerry is dead then. Now you're sheep Jerry. Do I get a say in this? No, the thing's already changed. What a ridiculous question. By the way, about the sheep thing, is this a uh, new development or uh... Are you seriously asking? You got me this job after getting me fired for working at the ticket booth at the fun fair. Oh yeah, good ending of Randy's route, right? What on earth are you talking about, you sad little creature? I'm kind of a demigod, it's fine. Uh, matters not. Sheet Jerry, it's so good to see you. Yeah, right. Uh, so, to reflect your own question back at ya... What are you doing out here? The, did my wife send ya? No. But for the last time, we've been over this. If I can't bring the sheep home with me, she can't bring our marital issues out into the bar pasture. First of all, your bar pasture? Did you just call it a bosture? Just call it the bosture. If the next thing you say doesn't engage me, I will try to leave. Should you attempt to stop me, I will become violent. Well, then you're in luck, because boy, have I got the pitch for you. Is it... Phone Lord, please tell me you aren't trying to retrieve the last ID you pitched to me. Or revive. For the last time, even if you find one, I strongly doubt that any boar would let you ride upon its back. I would. I'm a boar. <laughs> even if it sent the buys with a stick of horse jerky or hand-fed diced kiwi. This is making me really want kiwi fruit. Like, bad. And we don't have any. I could walk to the store. Distractions, doesn't matter. Wait, do you mean a kiwi fruit or a kiwi bird? Well, which did you mean back when you first pitched the plan? Uh, you think my memory lasts that long, babe? Uh, I don't remember. The shame on your face says otherwise. What, is my, like, receiver sloping off to one side? Where are you even gonna find a kiwi bird? New Zealand break into the zoo, just scurry away with one under my arms. I've actually met a kiwi in real life. Uh, they're way bigger than you think they are. If you're capable of breaking into the zoo, why not just ride out on something cooler than a boar to begin with, like a polar bear, which was my childhood favorite animal, now it's Eurasia Jays, but... Or a, uh... Wait, why am I helping you? Oh, yeah, that reminds me, I need a favor. I swear, if you ask me to give you a ride back to Dialtown sitting on my lap... Th no, I... That's actually a great idea. You see, I got drugged, and then I woke up in the woods trapped in a cat carrier. Okay, I'm sure this is all some sort of regular occurrence for you. So, what's the issue, then? I need you to read this note for me. I found it stapled to my spine after I busted out of the cat carrier. I'm sorry, staple to your spine. Phone lord, I can't tell if this was meant to be intentionally cruel or if this was just simply a display of baffling incompetence. Probably both. Oh, must have been the mob. Definitely the dial town mob sandy work. This very particular kind of befuddlement is practically their signature. So, the note? Oh, sure. I'll read it for you. Hang on, I gotta... Um, burp. Anyway, because I got the burps. Because reading things for a long period of time makes air go into your lungs. Fun fact. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, will your flock over in the posture be fine when you read this to me? Are you trying to talk me out of the favor I just agreed to for you? I, I didn't read that. I'm stupid. Hang on. Oh, right. Sorry. Nah, I'm sure they'll be fine. After all, how much chaos could a few unattended sheep possibly cause in the few measly minutes that I spent here chatting with you? That was... <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. It 
was it was the, the saxophone. That's what killed me. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing fine. Right. Let's read what's on the front of this here note. It says, oh. It reads, don't come back. I mean it. Don't even try. Don't. I mean it. I really mean it. I. Okay. There's a whole page of this. Anyway. It's, it sounded like he was reading that it arrived. It's signed, the uh, Mingus. Wait, the Maya exiled you? She was always trying to. I can't believe she... Oh, Lord, I, I thought she was done with all this exiling nonsense. No, since no, uh... Since what? Since my potential new date? Are you gonna say Norway? Are we in Norway, Jerry? Go get some school bread. <laughs> it's a particular type of pastry I really like. Uh, or like some kind of like cornet, like, uh, I think they're just called cream hordes, but, um, they just have like whipped cream and like berries and shit, I don't know. But school bread's really good. Does this look like Norway to you? I'm sure Norway has trees. Uh, for their, uh, Fjord creatures to live in? Look, do you want me to read what's on the other side of the note or not? Please. Let's see here. Seems this side of the note is intended to be read by the first literate person to find you post-exile in case you manage to wander back to civilization. Which is you, correct? Presuming you went straight here after escaping the cat carry you woke up in and did it say get coaxed into eating dog food from the palm of a wandering stranger. Did, did you? What? No, just just read the thing. All right, all right. Let me just, uh... Oh. Oh. Oh, oh? Does it say why the bear biggest, uh, kicked me out of town? Yeah, it does, but, but... Logo, I don't think I should... You might be happier not hearing this. Jerry, what does it say? I need to know, Jerry. Alright, then. To whom it may concern. Alas, you have just encountered the heinous Logo, a vile and wretched creature. A strong start. In all my years as mayor, I have never encountered a beast more repugnant than Logo. Logo is not just a burden of hawks, a leech on society, but also an immense threat to civility and normality itself. <laughs> I I'm just laughing at the idea of me being this omnipotent, omnipotent, whatever. A fundamentally selfish creature, Logo uses others for their own, often self-centered schemes as if they were mere tools. I wonder if I should be reading this in Mingus's voice. A fundamentally selfish creature, Logo uses others for their own, often self-centered schemes as though they were mere tools. Logo frolics around in the open, breaking laws just as thoughtlessly as they, as they have break, broken the collective hearts of our fair citizens. Do we? Oh, we do have a tail, I guess, maybe? Freely engaging in public nudity, routinely harassing innocent civilians, whatever they so wish. I know we talked about having a tail. An obnoxious and abrasive degenerate. They periodically spew offensive and vulgar and often hurtful utterances merely to see how their victims will react. Is that Randy? Because I was, I dated Randy. Logo is incapable of listening to any advice or direction, no matter how detrimental the consequences are of not doing so to themselves and others. Randy's literally like one of my favorites, so I'm, I take personal offense to that. Logo will repeatedly harass Target, relentlessly eroding their willpower in order to get anything that they so desire. Give me the ice cream. And of course... The gangrenous Krypton in, is reckless and will mortally endanger both themselves and innocent bystanders without a second thought. Logo must be shunned from all civilized society as they have decided that they are too good to domesticate themselves. Domesticate. 
or, as we who contribute to society will call it, treating others with basic courtesy and respect. Rude. That's actually a really cool drawing. If you are a Dial Town resident and should find this wretched heathen skulking around the perimeter of our fair city, I am instructing you to immediately notify one of my enforcers. My name is Mingus, Mayor of Dial Town. Look at this look upon this wretch ye mighty in despair. Were all these pictures also stapled to my back? A new day is dawning in Dial Town, and it is brighter without logo. Oh, that's cool. Yours benignly, Mayor Mingus Crown. Uh, I, huh, Th that's, uh, none of that's true, right? All of that is true. <laughs> I, did I? Deserve this? Absolutely. Well, I don't... Well, are you getting soft for me, Jerry? Oh, Lord, all my life, I've been told that I'm... That I'm a monster. I thought those people just wanted to be hurtful because I was different. You run around naked. <clears throat> I had no idea that I really was a monster. Jerry, I'm sorry. Uh, no. No, th th this isn't right, damn it. This is... <sighs> this waste of paper isn't fit to wipe my ass. What? Jerry, are you actually going soft for me? Logo, this note is bullshit. It's not reality. Are you gaslighting me? <laughs> it's manipulative, dishonest hit piece, the one that Mingus is hoping will deter you from returning. Don't give her the satisfaction. But, I mean, the note's right about me, it is. This is who I am. Look, Logo, we need to save real fast because we don't want to go through that whole shaban shenanigans again. Okay? Alright. Thank you. Thank you for saving, Logo. Look, Logo... I'm not even gonna pretend that you aren't sometimes extraordinarily selfish, reckless, vulgar, nor abrasive. Gee whiz, don't get all... Mm, thank you. But there's two monstrous falsehoods in here, each of which makes this note completely refute itself. What falsehoods? First of all, as much as it pains me to admit it, given how much effort I put into deterring you from lollygagging around my former place of work, the fact that you refuse to get up is sometimes a positive attribute. But the note says that I harassed you, and I totally did. <laughs> Logo, you got me the job I'm currently working right now. I owe the bar pasture to you. One, posture. Two, really? You don't know how much happy I am with this life. You didn't have to do any of this. But you did. You think the mayor has ever cared for my plight, that of the common man? I sent stacks of petitions urging the mayor to deal with your continued attempts to lay egg on the eggs on the funfair grounds. And she only acted after I left town when it suited her schedule. Mingus and her posse are only out for themselves. Her inner circle is made solely up of loons, bureaucrats, and thugs, all high on their own power. I want you- they want to be, you- blah, 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 hang on, let me thought that again. They want you to believe that you're alone, but... You're not. Have I really made the world a better place? Depends on who you ask, beloved. Well, you certainly made mine better. My marriage is stronger, and the smogless air is doing wonders for my Allstain's eczema. Also, dealing with sheep is pretty chill compared to my old boss. Because of you, Randy Jade has a home, a better job, and ample time to recover from his swan-related injuries. Because of you, Karen Dunn is a state-renowned painter doing what she was born to do. 
because of you, all of us Swift gets to sleep soundly at night knowing that Mr. Dick and Dream lives on through their whole attraction. Because of you, Bigfoot is content with himself and has felt human love, or rather, the love of a whatever you are. All five of us are so much better off for having met you. And we'll stand with you. You cared for five misfits that you didn't even know more than a month ago, to an extent that nobody else ever has. So, I suppose I owe you thanks for that. Sheep Jerry, I... I don't know what to say. Th thank you. Wait, what was that other thing? The other what? You said the note had... Or, you said the note had two glaring issues. What's the other? Oh, right, right. You aren't the first person that Mingus has exiled from Dialtown, you know? Ow, that was loud. There was... another... Someone else was exiled for their tomfoolery, like me? Was it a clown? What? No! Clowns don't exist! I gotta hydrate! Alright, let's take a second so we don't accidentally gargle water. <laughs> Alright. A month ago, you were also sure that Bigfoot didn't exist. Don't do this to me, Logo. I just gave you an inspiring pep talk. Don't give me a clown dream. The clown dreams again. Sorry, sorry. Look, that note says that you're a danger to norma normality itself, but really, there's no such true thing as normality or nor abnormality. Normality's just an illusion. A concept that changes to fit wherever and perhaps whenever you happen to be. True. If it's what people accept as the norm in a certain place at a certain time because of the... Bleh, because of that, what's considered normal changes. Correct. Hundreds of years ago, it was normal to burn suspected witches, normal to declare a world war <laughs> over Serbian tomfoolery, and returned a uh, normal to, uh, well, about to have a phone for a head. You mean before the dial-up? Before everyone got object heads? Everyone, except for one. Wait! No way! No fucking way, are you sure? Are we gonna beat a person? I can't tell you exactly how it all happened. I don't know the guy, I never met him. But he's the last human left without an altered head to my knowledge. No way. It's funny, normally I'm the opposite. I'm excited for object heads, not people, but... Okay, okay. His head is made of flesh, not metallic pieces within a plastic shell. My head is made of flesh, in all fairness. No stitches. He's a normie. <gasps> like I said, he's from another place. Another time. Mingus exiled him from Dialtown for his abnormality. Said he conflicted with her vision for Dialtown. Whatever the hell that means. But, where he came from, he was normal. And we would have been abnormal. Like you, he got a bum deal. Where is he right now? Oh, he lives in a shack eight miles from here, give or take. I don't know if I'd recommend seeking him out. He's just as likely to shoot you on sight as he is to actually talk to you. Sorry, scratch that. He is far more likely to shoot you the moment he sees you than talk to you. I need to find him. I know I'm not going to be able to talk you out of this. But... You could live out here with me and the sheep. <laughs> I got a spare pile of hay in the dry corner of my barn. Cherry? Alright, alright. Just know that if you ever grow weary, hungry, or get hit by lightning or whatever. I'll always be out here, waiting for you. Cherry? I, I'm seriously, like, tearing up. That's so sweet. Thank you. I'm gonna seek this man out now. Probably gonna get shot, it's fine. Okay, cut through the clearing and walk through the trees for about eight or so miles due north. You'll find the shack. Point me north, I don't know directions. And for what it's worth, good luck. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you, Jerry. It's been my pleasure, truly. 
Please try not to walk straight into a bad trap. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Farewell, Sheep Jerry. Goodbye, Logo. You're welcome back anytime. Er, goodbye, Logo. You're welcome back anytime. Jerry! Oh my goodness! Okay, let's save, let's save, let's save. Oh my gosh, I didn't think Jerry would- Oh my goodness! Huh, I am so exhausted. Must have walked a good seven miles by now, at least. Seven miles? Jerry is still within earshot. Keep going, you're doing great! Phone- Phone Lord. You know that it's only gonna get harder from here, right? If you're already tired and Jerry's got that pile of hay in his barn. No, I have to find the normie man. Return to Dial Town. Alright, I'll address the power hose-headed elephant in the room now, then. Why? Why on earth do you want to go back to Dial Town so badly? I have, like, four romantic partners. <laughs> Is this about your eggs? I can't just leave them there, Aider. Okay, okay, I know that you invested un an unusual amount of time and effort for you into birthing them, but... They're probably going to look like you when they hatch, right? And what's that supposed to mean exactly? Just a factor to consider before getting yourself killed trying to get to him again. <laughs> Alright, quick trip back to Dial Town, grab the eggs, then hitchhike as far away from Dial Town as you possibly can. I don't plan to abandon Dial Town either, actually. I'm sorry, abandon Dial Town. They exiled you, Logo! The town's mayor has it out for you. Most of the citizens there treat you like you're some kind of monster. Why not start over? Why not take your eggs somewhere else and start a new life? Dial Town's home. I was tempted to pick spite. I won't let anyone take my home from me. Hmm. Just as pig-headed as always. Hey, rude. Alright, it's a long shot, but... Let's keep moving. I'll make sure you keep north. Uh, is North up? C can you give me a boost? Go forward, Logo. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if he shoots on sight. Behold, a shack. You think this is the place? Well, let's see. It's a shack. We've traveled roughly eight miles north and... Oh, right. Most important thing. Jerry mentioned that this dude is more likely to shoot you on sight than actually speak to you. This is most certainly looks like the home of somebody who would do just that. Oh, pfft. it's a bit of a fixer-upper, but... A fixer-upper? Really? What? Hello, the deranged graffiti. Uh, hey, we all write things down so we don't forget them later on. Are you kidding me? Don't drink the water! Maybe the allure of the dude's toilet water is just too much for the poor guy. I know that sometimes I need to be reminded not to drink it. Even when I remind you not to do so, you still drink it. Added flavor. Many eyes always watching. Theory. Owls. This guy's clearly unhinged and quite possibly feral. Let's bounce. Hey, I'm feral and that's not such a bad life. You're stranded in the woods because you got exiled for not being housebroken. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, I am now approaching the shack. Should I knock on the door? Could try opening it first. Check if it's locked. That's a terrible idea. Door didn't open. That leads me to believe that this is indeed locked. Actually, perhaps that's for the best. Jerry stated pretty clearly that this dude might totally shoot your noggin clear off. Would probably be best not to break into this house and startle him. Could brick his window, though. What's the last time- what happened the last time you tried that? Oh, I went to prison for a short spell. Don't brick windows. Uh... Wait, if I did that again, the cops might drag me back to Dial Town. Uh, yeah, no, you're gonna get shot. Yeah, but you'd be in prison. But I would be back in Dial Town. Yeah, and behind bars. I will consider my options. Uh, scratch that. Prison food tends to be jerky-less. I meant just knock. Phenomenal. Whoa, knock, knock, knock. Hi. 
this is private land, partner. So, I suggest you leave before I decide to do what I usually do to trespassers. Uh, I'm gonna slightly turn down our music, loves. Just ever so slightly. Okay, cool. Anyway. Alright, I gotta let me get back into the game. Uh, did that move the entire screen? No, okay. Uh, you mean inviting them in for a cup of coffee? If by a cup of coffee you mean a lead slug fired straight into your head, then sure. I'm still unsure if... Am I being offered a cup of coffee? To be clear, I'm threatening to shoot you. With a shot of cappuccino? With the shot of a shotgun! I am threatening to shoot you in the head with a shotgun, partner! Actually, nah, forget that. Slugs don't grow on trees. I could just grab a snail, take it... Oh, you could just grab a snail, take a shell off? That's like a slug. Honestly, i just put a 44 cal in you, if we're being realistic. Or millimeter cal, I forget which. It's been a while. More economical that way. Is that a, uh... It's not coffee. It's a bullet. I am not offering you coffee. That's, you're a pretty lousy host, then. Lord, give me strength. Look, partner, I'm not normally the kind and merciful type, but I can tell you, I can tell you ain't all there, and most importantly, you definitely ain't a threat to me, nor my homestead. Just go. But we need to talk. Mayor Mingus exiled me too from Dialtown. I'm a freak, just like you. Just like... We ain't the same, partner. You don't... You don't have an inkling of what I've been through. I don't want you here, you understand? Come on, how bad can I be? Well, you're trespassing on my land for a start. Uh, yeah, that usually does it all right. I'm not gonna warn you again. Just go. I'm not moving until you let me in. My door's dead bolted and I got enough supplies to last me six winters in here. If you wanna wait, you'll have to wait an awful long time, partner. So be it. Smash cut to me like, please let me in. Alright. And so we wait, chat. We do have a tail. And I think we did get one of our kidneys stolen. Oh, Jesus Christ. We grew fur! Alright. We are waiting a real long time. Everyone's going to be so worried about us. Alright. Howdy, Fred. Hi. Well, what in tarnation could you possibly want from me? Alright. Hi. Wave slowly and sheepishly. You know, partner, I get the feeling you're like a leech. Oh, you're calling me a parasite like Mayor Mingus did. Nah, nah, that ain't what I meant. What I meant was, I'm getting the notion that you're just gonna cling to me and you won't fall off till I, till you suck my patience dry. That is very accurate, love. Uh, let's not flirt in the most disgusting way I've ever seen. That's why I picked the cutesy routes rather than the, the flirt routes. Okay, yeah, that's an accurate portrayal of my entire gimmick, sure. I didn't want to give you the satisfaction, but... Well, way I see it, you clearly ain't gonna quit. And the sooner I talk to you, the sooner you'll be on your way. Accurate. Step inside and be quick about it. We'll get this chat of ours over with right quick. Thank you. Hello. Buddy. 
bro. <laughs> Gonna lose my mind, chat. I I wasn't sure if the picture I'd seen was real. Apparently it was. So you're Hang on. Huh. Say, what's with the paper bag? Hang on. Alright, cool. What do you think I have it on, partner? Uh oh, are you covering up an embarrassing an embarrassing bandage on your forehead? One that says something akin to fuckface, and if I take it off, he'll explode? What in tarnation are you gibbering on about? This sort of thing, what they're teaching kids at schools nowadays, about folk like me? Uh, let's see. It's a real condition, I met a dude like that. Uh-huh. Is he like me? What, a space cowboy? Uh, no- I mean- a fellow without an object head. Oh, no, he's not quite a person, granted, but for unrelated reasons. You know, speaking of not quite being a person, I gotta ask. Why does your flesh have the hue of a watermelon anyhow? Uh, it's just how God made me, sir. Well, guess he was having a bad day when he did, huh? Maybe. The guy drinks a lot. I have met him. He's kind of a huge loser. Ain't wise to walk into an armed man's home and insult his faith, friend. Oh dear. Not wise in the slightest. Are we gonna get shot? Trust me, you'd feel the same if you met him. Once you see God eating out of a dumpster, it changes you. Lord, give me strength. He's more likely to give you fleas, but sure. Alright, let's just get this here conversation over with. What do you actually want? Ask your questions and go. Who are you? I'm Sergeant Norm Allen. What's a sergeant? Means I was in the Air Force and I was pretty good at what I did. What? Air Force? <laughs> okay. Flying. Planes and such. Planes? I, n I know you know what an airplane is. I, I do. Big metal bird. Roars when you throw lunch meat into its engines. Right, yes. I know what you mean now. Well, uh, I'm an ex-Air Force now. I rolled with NASA for a while, too, actually. You know, the space folks. They sent you into space? Doubtful. Bone Lord, Mingus really went all out trying to exile you. I wasn't a pariah back then, partner. As a matter of fact, I was decorated. Like a Christmas tree? Ah. Uh, no, not like a Christmas tree, partner. I meant like I was valued, celebrated. What's that like? I have no idea which character to pick for you. I would honestly just flip a coin. For your information, the president himself selected me for a mission. Ooh, ooh, which one? President, uh, pre pre president? President, uh, Fonald Ringen? Phone Bill Clinton? Nah, the man who picked me was the greatest visionary in American history. President Callum Crown. Hey, I know that name. Wasn't he, uh, didn't he invent the con cotton candy machine or something? Did he? He was the fellow who invented the first phone head. That man who initiated the dial-up. We are amazingly stupid, Norm. You would be amazed. Or you'd be surprised. You know, the day the whole world became chock full of phone folk. Right, uh, about that. Why aren't you a phone? I was told the dial-up got everyone. Right, right. Well, you see... It sort of did, but... You see, the President Crown decided to send me on an immensely vital, hell, an unprecedented expedition. He chose for me to be the first human being to ever enter a wormhole. Oh, is that why you're not, like, ancient? Okay. 
We tried sending in robots and the like first, but all of them lost signal pretty quickly, as I'm sure you can imagine. I kind of want to do a cosplay of this guy. I think it'd be fun. It'd be pretty easy. I, I've never seen a robot, and if I did, I would likely hit on it and slash or shit myself. Sorry, go on. Yeah. We weren't sure if they were getting crushed inside the wormhole, or if they was just traveling too far away from us. Anywho, as a patriot, I was beyond honored to have been handpicked by President Crown for the mission. They sent me up in one of them state-of-the-art crafts. I piloted her through, and, well, I just came right back out the same way I came in, seemingly. Nothing that weird, I suppose. Except, I could see every one of the robots that we'd previously sent through floating around outside the hole now. Kinda spooked me, you know? Since I didn't see a single one of them outside the hole before I went in. Either way, undeterred, I made my way back to Earth. Boy, did I get a shock when I landed and re-emerged from my vessel. You ever see that one movie where the astronaut returns to Earth and there's monkeys everywhere? And then he sees the Statue of Liberty on the beach and freaks out because he's been in New York the whole time? Can I give you a fun fact? Can I give you guys a fun fact? Um, where that was filmed is somewhere out in the middle of nowhere in Utah, where, where they filmed sequences for that. And I've driven through that place, and it literally looks like the moon. It's so weird. Um, but yeah. Anyway, a lot of things were actually filmed out in Utah, fun fact. Um, anyway, anyway. All right. And New York sucks. Can't say that I don't disagree with them. I, I'm. I all the bad is the respect to people from well, specifically New York City. It's I, I'm much more of a suburbs kid slash like country kid rather than a, a city guy. I I I don't like big cities. All them yuppies and city slickers. I'm pretty sure that isn't why the dude was upset. Fuck, I don't know if enough about monkeys to contradict you. Technically chimpanzees, not monkeys, but alright. Long story short, I time traveled. The wormhole warped the fabric of time as well as space, it had seen. In an instant, I warped from the summer of 66 to the 2020s. Oh, oh, God told me about why wormholes do that. He said that they're where he puts a cigar out on the fabric of space time. I had to leave my wife, my whole life behind to investigate a cigar burn in the outer... Uh, God damn it! His salt, man. Take it up with him. You know what? I very well might. Anyhow, by time traveling past the day that the dial-up occurred... Well, I ended up being the one guy on Earth to get left behind. The one normie left. Which, you see, is very fitting, because, you know, my name's Norm, so, eh, well, sipped. I heard something happened with the clowns. Right, they marched on D.C. and all got gunned down by the new gun-headed riot police. Tragic and hilarious. My God, you could hear the comical honks for miles. The honkening. Uh-huh. I remember when clowns were everywhere, you know. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, I guess this is the one advantage of living in this time and place, if there are any upsides at all. I'm also going to save. Because we're going pretty far into this dialogue tree, you see? No, let's not save a second time, though. Yep. Yeah, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Alright. So, I guess it's just me left now. I'm so sorry, Fuzzy. I hope, I hope it gets easier. The last normie. That's why I got exiled from Dialtown in the first place, you know? Didn't want to conform and get my head replaced against my will, all for the sake of fitting in. Oh, oh, that's why I got kicked out of town. For threatening normality itself. Oh, give me a break. They use that same kind of asinine line on you, too? Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing normal about Dialtown. 
And there certainly ain't nothing normal about the mayor of that backwater slum. She has this idea that put, by putting these plans of hers into motion, she's somehow going to be recreating the dial town that Callum Crown presided over. I spent that time in that dial town before they launched me into space, you know. I actually saw the dial town that existed back then, unlike her. I personally knew her grandfather for he... She's an ignorant hypocrite, not fit to hold any office, let alone run an entire town. Mingus is certainly something, all right. You ever seen her up close? I have. She got a cat head. A fleshy cat head pre-dial-up era. A kind from my time. You know why she got that engineered, right? Because her grandpappy, President Callum Crown, had a cat just like how she looks now. She's trying to morph into his old cat. That's terrifying, but why? Cats are cuter, I don't know. Sure as hell beats me. I don't know why anyone would want to look like she does. I mean, unless they're a furry. And somehow she gets elected into public office time and time again looking like that. Oh yeah, absolutely fuzzy mood. They're happy to kick me to the curb, yet their leader is the very definition of abnormality. She's a hypocrite. They're all hypocrites in that damn dump. Dialtown's a town of bigoted hicks. Everyone in that godforsaken town's guilty by association. Oh, no, not everyone in Dialtown is that bad. Excuse me? They threw you to the curb, too, didn't they? Well, the mayor's a prudish... <laughs> cat, I'm just gonna say cat, because I'm tired of saying that. Fine. But I have friends back in Dialtown, too. I guarantee you anyone in that town would sell you down the river without a second thought. I have romance for people, thank you. And if you just can't see that, if you can't see that, you're just as blind as they all are. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I've been answering your questions and all of them. I've messed up my dialogue, it's fine. I think you're, you've imposed on me and taking advantage of my hospitality for long enough. You should leave. But I don't want to go. My land, my rules, partner. If I let you... I've let you ask your questions. Now move on. I got other things to do. Well, what will I do? Hang on, let me save this just in case it doesn't sway him and then we'll come back and be sarcastic. All right. Let's see. You're a free American, so that's your business, not mine. As far as I'm concerned, being cast out of that bigoted town was a blessing in disguise for the both of us. And I don't want company, so I suppose we're at an impasse. Oh, wait. Except we ain't, because I got a gun. So, get out. Move on. Find a better cesspit to squat in. And get yourself the hell out of mine. I, I don't know where to go. I know exactly where to go, but it's fine. Follow the perimeter of the town until you find the freeway and hitchhike in literally any direction. The further away you get from Dialtown, the better. Then why haven't you done it? Don't make the mistake of settling too close to town like I did, or you'll have to put up with visitors like you showing up every now and again. Wait, wait, have others come by here? No one nearly as annoyingly persistent as you. There's a shepherd who lives eight or so miles down the road, but he knows how to keep his distance on account of the signs. Sure didn't stop you, though. Right, signs can't stop me because I can't read. Should have... I knew I should have gone all out and stuck a head on a spike out the front. All right, I'll cut you deal, partner. I'm willing to let you stay on my land if you want. But only from the chin up and at the end of a wooden stick. <laughs> uh, would I be all right? You'd be dead. Yeah, but like, would I be okay? Hold on, gotta get rid of something on my other screen. Shoot. All right, cool. You'd be... <clears throat> 
please, be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. That's the first thing you said so far that I happen to agree with, you know? Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I've seen a woman skulking around these parts for the last week or so through my binoculars. Of course, she never gotten too close to the shack. Seems she's the artsy type. <gasps> Jared! Uh, on account of her usually having an easel under her arm. Looks between 4'10 to 5'4, I'd say. Unarmed, of course. She's tiny! Head's some kind of printer. Brown with a small white decal that I wasn't able to make out from this distance. Wait a minute. Karen! You found Karen! You know this woman? Yeah, we, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is a truly revolting number of ellipses. This is fantastic news. She's smart. She'll figure out a way to smuggle me back into Dial Town for sure. Good for you. Goody for you. Now get out. You want to go back to that cesspit so bad? Then go. Get. Betcha she's over by the lake. That's where I'd go if I ever wanted to paint something from around these parts that wasn't trees, dirt, or sheep. All right, I... Uh... I guess I'll go look for her, then. Yep. Guess I'll just skedaddle now. I kind of want to add a f fifth romanceable to my, uh, equation. You've already said that. I just... I feel weird leaving you here. Don't. I want you to. But I feel like we've really hit it off. <laughs> Logo, sweet thing. We have it, and it took an enormous amount of restraint to not shoot you at least 18 times in the last three minutes. But you didn't. You held back. Maybe you real Get out. Why don't you want to come with us? Because why in tarnation would I ever want to go back to Dial Town? I told you, that town's chock full of low-down snakes. Worst of all, that mayor. Ooh, I know, I know. Wouldn't it be really funny to see the mayor's face when I return? She's gonna be so pissed when she finds out I'm back. Might get mauled by police dogs again, we'll just have to see. My god, that is the stupidest... Wait. Huh. You really think that if you found your way back into Dial Town, you'd be able to get to the mayor herself? You bet. I've reached her once, and I'm sure I can do it again. No kidding. Hmm. All right, partner. I suppose you convinced me. It's a deal, then. Epic. Wowzers. Very swag. Jesus Christ, never make me say that again. You know, the deal is I'm willing to accompany you back to Dial Town, not listening to your asinine idioms. I'll travel with you back to Dial Town, just to get to the mayor and see her get her just desserts. Alright. In, in that case, let's get going. No time like the present, eh? We might as well, sure. Be nice to get to the lake before we hit Hog Hour. Stop being mean to me! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ten minutes of the worst chit-chat imaginable later. Alright. So, are turnips, like, fruit? Or what? I believe they are not, because they don't have seeds contained within them. Um, that is the difference between... Because, like, most things that we call vegetables are actually fruit. But things like potatoes, carrots, are not. Um, because they don't have seeds contained within them. For the last time, partner... I told you I'm willing to accompany you, but the needless chit-chat does not come under our terms of agreement. I'll walk with you. Shoot at anything that tries to shoot us first, but I ain't up for banter of any kind. This will be the last turnip-related question, I promise. You said that three times already, partner. No more. Let me save... Just in case he gets real mad at me being like, Be nice to me, bitch! 
You could be nicer to me, you know. And you could be quieter. I'm not programmed that way. My, what a world that might be. I gotta hydrate. <sighs> Alright, give it a second. Okay. I could... I could always yodel to pass the time. Harder. As my mama used to say. Congrats on the choice, by the way. Uh... It ain't wise to yodel at a man who's holding a loaded firearm. Huh. Did she say it often? Once. Only needed to say it once for it to sink in. Huh. Right then. Hey, Norm, I have one last question. If you ask me another question about turnips or radishes or... I, I swear, you're gonna taste lead for the rest of your short life. No, I wanted to ask... Is Mingus right about Dial Town? What are you talking about now? Are you starting to piece together why they might have wanted to get rid of you? No, not about the exiling part. Her wanting to make Dial Town just like it was when Callum was in charge. I guess what I mean is... Do you think Dial Town was better off before Callum died? Before he what now? You think he's... You don't know a damn thing about what President Crown achieved, do you? I know he had a funny head, he wore, wore a flag for a tie, and he made a lot of telephones. That's the gist of him, right? The gist of... He was the greatest leader this country's ever had. A visionary. And a tragic waste of potential in the end. I found out what happened to him. After I jump forward in time, of course. So wait, he's not dead, but he is gone. That's the long and short of it, yeah. To my knowledge, he's still alive and kicking, but completely still gone. I'm even more confused now. You make brain hurt, Magic Hat Man. Alright, alright. Maybe you'll understand if I start at the very beginning, context and all. Backstory time! <clears throat> Callum Crown was born here oh. in Dial Town in nineteen twenty four. Okay. Growing up in the thirties, in an era of depression and change, Callum found himself transfixed with the technology that was becoming slowly commonplace at the time, namely the telephone. Callum was born with a severe deformity, having only one complete limb, his left arm. While extraordinary Anakin? bright, he lived a solitary life. Watching other kids outside perform feats he could only dream of. Mm -hmm. When the early 40s rolled around, Callum signed up to fight in World War II, but wasn't mm -hmm. accepted on account of his disability. He had to stay home and bitterly follow the war alongside the rest of those unfit to fight via right. hazy radio transmissions. If only I could walk, Callum thought to himself. Mm -hmm. If I could walk, I could serve. It was at that time that Callum put his garage workshop to good use. Uh huh. Make use of scraps of just about any metal he could get his hands on. Forge himself a pair of prosthetic legs, which, while crudely assembled, were mm -hmm. virtually unheard of at the time. He sent the army registration uh, office it. a note, vouching for his new metallic appendages, vowing to join their cause, whatever the cost. Mm -hmm. He never got a reply. <laughs> so he simply sent another letter. Sucks to suck. Then another. And another. What started as one letter quickly became dozens. Right. Always a motivated guy, Callum decided to use his head. Try something new. Callum bought his first telephone. Uh-huh. After getting through the dial town's head and listen, Callum found out that to his shock, every single one of his letters had hit their mark. Yeah. But was simply thrown out en masse. I'm here to recruit the best of the best this country has to offer. Mm-hmm. Recruiter stated over the phone. Not some freak with metallic legs would slow the rest of my boys down. Big oof. With a single disconnected click. Callum's dreams were obliterated yet again. Mm hmm Callum, now full of spite and determination, decided to better himself further. Right. He bit himself a right hand out of just about any metal he could find left over from the construction of his legs. Mm -hmm. Connected the copper wires to his own nerves and forged the very first fully working prosthetic hand. Yeah. With the war winding down, Callum decided to go out to patent his designs. People at the patent office looked at him as though he were a freak. Mm -hmm. His rusted iron clanking hand and his bulky metallic legs. Callum bitterly listened to the end of the war, 
now disillusioned. Mm -hmm. Via hazy radio transmission whilst tweaking his mechanical limbs to be more functional. Right. Until 1948, Calvin decided to try his hand at selling his mechanical limbs to war veterans. Mm -hmm. Many of which had returned in the coming months after the war. Yep. Initially, they sold like hotcakes, allowing Crown to move from his garage to a small manufacturing plant. Now I want plant. pancakes. Sadly, this did not turn out to be a sustainable business model. Because <laughs> once Probably he not. bought a prosthetic leg or two, they didn't need to buy another. Come 1950, Dark, but okay. Callum struggled to move even one limb. This led him back to the drawing board. His invention to dramatically improve his own quality of life. Mm -hmm. He wanted if he could offer his fellow man an upgrade. Advanced metallic limbs that had tools built in. Oh, dear God. Strength or flexibility. Limbs that could even change humanity. Even change the world? The world? Sounds like Maverick talked to me. Callum took him to the public, parading his new and improved models around in the street shows, using himself as a test subject. Mm -hmm. He laughed off as a monster with metallic limbs. Like me. Sell his own misery to others. Callum was looked on as a self-mutilated idiot. Mm -hmm. Someone who made himself a freak for show and... Not as a talented and determined visionary who came that to the path that he needed underneath him to walk. I'll prove them wrong. I'll prove the whole world wrong if I must. Okay. Callum gradually became more cynical. He began reading more into the market with the vain hopes of copying success. Mm. Sure enough, he figured it out. Oh? Sadly, America turned into a luxury market. Yeah. Washing machines, televisions, refrigerators, mm -hmm. all selling faster than the nearby factories could churn them out. Yep. Callum's idea to integrate organics and inorganics wasn't taken to right away. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. With a lack of sales revenue, Callum had to all but shut down Crown Mechanics Incorporated and let each and every one of his workers go. Oof. Callum soon became something of a town oddity, not unlike myself. Mm -hmm. A door-to-door -door salesman made of clunking, rusted metal. A vendor of that which was unwanted. Mm -hmm. Callum somehow felt lonelier than ever before. Even more so than when he was back in his garage, right. watching the rest of the world move outside his window. He reflected on his loneliness, once again being bound to his workshop, next to his phone, desperate not to miss a single opportunity for his dream to take off. Mm -hmm. His phone. It connected him to the world outside of the workshop, to the rest of Dial Town. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it could again. And that's when he realized. I've got it now. Mm -hmm. Calum spent a full year working on his new design. Look design at that. Phone that's built into your head. To be swapped and traded for other such devices. That's why? Warranty. No repurchases required. Huh. Finally, despite their clunkiness and novelty, the practicality of having complete and portable phone access anywhere in the world through airway frequencies wasn't lost on people. And interest That's actually really cool. Caught on quickly. A typewriter alternative even became common. Huh. The text to be printed from one's own head. As if the user was having a conversation with the bare paper itself. Mm -hmm. Unpredictably, these phone heads caused a massive boom to employment. Oh. Men and women getting hired left, right, and center as both manufacturers, but also operators in hmm. switchboard exchanges. This economic boom made Calum extraordinarily popular, which he used to run for mayor, hmm. senate, and finally the presidency. All three roles he walked in. I didn't even notice his hand before. A visionary. A man who could change the face of America for the second time. Huh. Becoming leader of the United Nations. Oh. He proposed to the world his vision for the future. His idea of a functional, inclusive, and wondrous mechanical world where all problems from famine to animal extinction, societal conflict, mm -hmm. and resource shortages, all could be solved. Preventing future wars huh. and creating worldwide harmony. However, due to paranoia, uh -huh. he refused to write the plan down in its entirety. Oh. Anyone would have prior to the proposal's agreement. Well, Needless here we go. Say, the vote in favor for the plan won by a landslide. Mm -hmm. and, and then the, the dial up began. The whole world was converted to have inorganic health. Women, hmm. children, animals too. That's a reference to the RCA dog. And failed the hardest for him. He began to give his opening speech mm. in his oratory opus. My fellow humans. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Without further ado, the full details of my plan to substantially improve the whole world. Oh. Calum had accidentally wiped his own analog <gasps> box, which for his model telephone was being used to store his memories. No. With Calum having given himself total amnesia in an instant, the whole world was stunned. 
What? The lab was made fundamentally different for everyone. All for a promise never kept. The changes, the thought process behind these sweeping modifications, are now a mystery. So, the world just picked up the pieces. Holy now, shit. Of course. Nowadays, Callum sits in an old nursing home, alone. Are we gonna meet him? Busted record, asking anyone who comes near him. Is the war over yet? I can't get a signal. Mmm. Oof. Alright. Hang on. Let's turn our music back down a little bit. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Holy shit. That's like wild. Huh. He deserved a bo better life for his service. Poor guy. Maybe he did, but... That's just the way the world works, you know? No system values its pawns. Life ain't about what you deserve, it's about what you get. I'm also gonna say, because that was a fairly decent chunk that I don't wanna redo. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 life ain't about what you deserve. Whoa, that's kinda eerie. My friend Karen said that to me once. Hello? All right, cool. Excuse me. What's going on? All right, there we go. Thank God. You know the woman you're about to meet. M meet. You make an arrangements with her, and I'll just keep my dis distance. Thank you very much. Nonsense. You've got to meet her. I don't mesh well with other people. You know that. You're meshing with me. Simply don't want nothing to do with them. I swore that I'd accompany you till we reached the mayor, but I said nothing about chatting to your strange friends. She's lovely, though. She's no nonsense, just like yourself. Don't try to put her me up. She and I are nothing alike. I guarantee you that. You're just a much more aggro per version of her. You really hate other people, huh? You know what I think? I think I'm going to try to change your mind about that. Not everyone is bad, you know. There's still some good in this world. Some people toss me meat. I hope that you'll get to see that. For the record, accompanying uh, accompany, a uh, accompany you does not include the learning of life lessons. If I wanted to learn a life or a crushing life lessons, I'd get married again or rub a cat's exposed fluffy belly. Nah, partner. I'm just dandy as I am, thank you very much. Now then, let's keep moving. Sun's a setting, and believe it or not, I don't want to see you break your ankle stepping in a gopher hole, and for me to have to put you out of your misery like a broken horse. I wouldn't take it personally if you had to. Alright, let's see. Oh! Did we not get to talk to Karen? Oh, we're back with Mayor Mangus. I appreciate you with... I appreciate you all meeting with me here yet again. As I'm sure you all know, approximately one year has passed since Logo's exile. Which is coincidentally the first time we've all been able to meet now that Billy's out of juvie, juvie on probation. Hey, don't sl slap the blame on the me, Mingles. You could have overturned my conviction and got me out instantly. Call him out on his bullshit. First of all, call me Mingles again, and it's the death penalty for you, bucko. Secondly, you get one free pardon a year, and this was your 17th. 17th conviction in a year is way lower than my annual average, to be fair. It's only mid-February. Look, my point still stands. The initiation of Phase 2, Mayor Mingus's perfect society reforms, is vastly overdue. Abel, drop by the fun fair and retrieve the green one shelled spawn for the- Do not touch my children. Are you kidding me? Why do I have to collect the eggs? They'll probably be moist. Very possibly, but alas, every other member is already preoccupied with the mission of their own. What about the mustachio dude? He hasn't done much yet. 
The Aurora is coordinating the tranquilization retrieval and containment of Bigfoot as usual, as per our mutually beneficial agreement. And I couldn't be more thrilled. Why, with competent and well-trained officers, this should be a cinch. Well, alas, the Aurora, those two idiots are all you've got to work with, so plan accordingly. You mean thus, ma'am? Are there any other two-for-one imbeciles in this room right now? You don't have to be so mean to us, ma'am. You're completely right, I don't. Also, take a pair of binoculars with you. They should help you locate the feral ape-man without getting too close as to, to startle him. The Aurora, take a tranquilizer gun and snag him from afar. Look for him in Uptown first. I'm certain I heard on the grapevine that the bank has a vault chock full of bananas just for him. I'm sure he lingers around their premises constantly. Miss Crown, couldn't we maybe have two pairs of binoculars? Alright, let's scare him a little. Yeah, what if we squabble over who gets to use the set that you just gave us and accidentally let Bigfoot get away? Oh, well, that's easy. I'd have you both killed. You could have him, bro. Bro. Marvelous. Billy, go get some fresh batteries for your megaphone from upstairs. So you're saying? Yes, yes, you can have the megaphone back on the condition that you don't use it in here ever again. If you need to release that zestful pent-up energy of yours during one of our meetings, then just scream it to a pillow or something. Can it be in one of the novelty throw pillows that you have in your lounge that look just like your face? Why would you want it to... Fine, fine, it's a compromise, I guess, sure. Wait, why can't he retrieve the eggs instead? It'll only take him a literal minute to find the batteries. Are you seriously asking why I'm not entrusting Billy to receive a set of items that are specifically renowned for being incredibly fragile? An item that is also consistently used for obnoxious pranks by youthful delinquents such as himself? I guarantee you, if you let him lay a finger on one single one of those eggs, we'll have to scrub the front of the town hall for a solid week to dispel the smell of rotten egg yolk. Yeah, that's true. I would totally betray you guys just to vandalize your clubhouse the literal moment I felt like it. Well, what about the hobo? He's not doing anything. He's warming Bunny's seat. That's his job. Very important. Oh, come on. Seriously. He's doing what I'm paying him for, which is more than I can say for you, Abel. Mayor, could I have some more dog food, please? You get half at the beginning and half at the end, as agreed. Yes, ma'am. Also, Abel, you're the only one of us with keys to the fun fair. You'd have to page your ticket booth employee and let him know someone else was coming on your behalf if we sent anyone else. Fat chance at that working. The guy's a moron. He'd somehow screw up the opening gates for us if we trusted him with the responsibility. Probably set the whole booth on fire or something. Whatever I'm paying him, it's far too much. Hang on, are you even paying him minimum wage? I stand by my statement. Look, how about this? If you go now, I promise you won't have to back out again for the rest of the night. Which suits me since you have no useful attributes aside from owning numerous roller coasters, so it's not like you're good for anything else. All right, all right. You didn't have to be so scathing about it. Next time, do as you're told the first time I ask, and I'll give you a rap peppermint instead of a harsh reality check. Now, get going. I believe we're all ready to initiate stage two. Wait, hold on, I have a question. Gaslight God. No, you don't. Thanks, you too. We should be golden, as I plan for every eventuality, including those where the green one mindlessly drifts back toward the outskirts of our town, of our fair city, after all this time, not unlike a discarded plastic bag. 
You see, I play something quite interesting along the outskirts of the town. Something akin to, say, a scarecrow. Should the stitched one wander back into the perimeter of Dial Town after a year begging for scraps elsewhere, it'll stumble into my surprise and likely won't stop running until it reaches the next country. County. Um, my pronouns are they, fam. Not it. Thank you, I'm not an animal. Or more likely collapse the face down in a waterlogged ditch and gets mistaken for green roadkill the next morning. Oh, come on. It couldn't be that repugnant. That bucket eats gravel from the side of the train tracks. You're underestimating their depravity. Oh, don't you understand, my minute spite child? I had this thing engineered from the pieces of the three most unnerving objects I could gather. I'm guessing part of it's a cloud. All three entities shed a dark, potent energy. And as one being, we possess a truly wretched force to be reckoned with. Granted, it's quite unlikely that they'll actually find it after not being seen for a whole year. Jesus fucking Christ! Oh God, what is that? What on God's green earth have we just encountered? Hat for Big Bertha. Knickknacks for Madam Mediocre. Entire essence of Greg. Big Gregma, no. No! The seeing this is the worst thing to happen in history. Ah! Thank you. you. You missed! How could you miss? It was three feet in front of you! I don't miss. Oh. There it goes. You were saying? Norm, I... How? I'm gonna say because I'm in so much shock. Thank you, Norm. Oh, shit. When you live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, there's really only three things that you have to occupy yourself with. Shooting tin cans, hunting for your supper, and swatting flies. Three of which majorly help you hone your aim. Specifically that third one. Good lord, the amount of critters that get wandering and flying into your house. The largest of which is me. And the most annoyingly persistent. At least flies move away from you for a moment when you swat at him. I'm a lovable creature. And you, you slaughtered Big Gregma, saving my life. Well, not quite, since you weren't in any actual danger, partner. You essentially just shat yourself over a weird-looking scarecrow. But had you not shot at Phone Lord, I'd have run till I hit the next county and continually shit myself the whole time. Or, you know, collapse in a ditch two miles up the road. You cared enough to shoot at it for my sake. You do have a kind heart, Norm. I shot it because you were screaming right in my ear. I do have an ear on each side of my head, you know. Oh, well, at least Big Gregma is fucking dead forever. Should I ask how in tarnation you knew this appalled abomination's name was? Oh, I meant its three constituent parts as distinctive entities uh, in three of the other four routes. What? Never mind. Anyway, I'm 80% sure the mayor slept together with shit she found around the town. Of course, only a creature as vile and depraved as Mayor Mingus could conceive of an entity this obscene. Um, by the way, the Greg part of that was an art exhibit that was in Karen's route when we had to go back and redo it. Uh, so, if you're wondering where that came from. Yeah, I think Mayor Mingus might be Kitty Satan. Oh. My gods. He has a kitty face chat. My life is complete. I'm sorry about that, Fuzzy. Oh, it'll be as sweet as molasses to see that cat get what she deserves. Yeah, I can't wait to see the look on her face when I return to town. Yeah, sure. Come on, we're spitting distance from the lake. With any luck, that printer pal of yours will still be loitering around. Karen! Beloved! My beloved! Karen, it's me, it's Logo! Logo? It's been so long, I... Where the fuck have you been? What are you doing out here? Did your cat homing instincts follow me out here? 
Did you pick up my scent? If you did, then that's extraordinarily impressive, given that I haven't seen you in at least a year. I, I ain't surprised in the slightest to learn that they got the nose of a bloodhound. Actually, no. You see, all the cough nectar I drank uh, has really dulled my palate. I don't quite have the nose of a bloodhound. More of an elderly pug, perhaps. Say, Karen, what are you doing out here anyway? It's like dusk and junk. You ever tried to paint the moon during the day? I'm sure I could if I... Norm, have you been to the moon? I passed it, but I never stepped foot on it. Didn't want to have to brawl with the feral folks still up there. Huh. Neat. So, Logo, are you going to introduce me to the eccentric dude to my left who visually clashes with himself, or... Hey, now, don't you be mean to my girl. Don't you dare cast your narrow-minded judgment about how I look. Well, I'm an artist, Norm, so I know visual consistency when I see it. Or in your case, the lack thereof. I don't do subtlety, but even for me, you've got a lot going on. Alright, you two seem to be coexisting. Karen, meet Sergeant Norm Allen. Norm, this here be Karen. Howdy, ma'am. He's essentially a cranky space cowboy, as you can see. Yeah, I figured that much out on my own. Is there much else to him? Uh... He's got gorgeous eyes. I saw one of them through a peephole before he pointed a gun at me. That might have been a mistake. To my shock and horror, I'm beginning to realize that our relationship may have actually somehow been your most normal and healthy one. Hey, hey me and them ain't dating. <laughs> Hang on, I know that, well, there's nothing else to do. Shit. Well, we kind of are. This is your route. I don't even know what that, what species you are. You don't cross the interspecies line when dating. Doesn't matter. Source, data Bigfoot. Bigfoot doesn't exist. Oh, see, I see. You're one of those people. What a sane, what a sane person, you mean? Hey, to my dismay, I can confirm Bigfoot's existence. We're actually well acquainted. B. I have yet to hear of a sane man wearing both a cowboy hat and a NASA suit. Looks at Mr. Bezos. I I'm sane enough to know that Bigfoot ain't... ain't. Alright, now that introductions are out of the way... Why exactly are you gallivanting through the woods with a sardonic space cowboy logo? Oh, so, funny story about that. It all started when I pissed off the wrong cat. Oh, for crying out loud. I'll just fill her in. I'll be much quicker and much less confused for everyone involved. Several minutes of actually coherent explanation later. So, that's the gist of it, I suppose. Yeah, you got all that? Yeah, I believe so. But, wait, how did they manage to cram them into a regular-sized cat carrier? With great difficulty, I'd imagine. Alright, thanks for clarifying. That was the only question I had. No, wait, actually, I have one other. Didn't you have a typewriter head when I saw you last, Loco? <laughs> yes? No? Maybe? Cool. So, what are you two looking for from me? Taxi fare, an alibi? Well, a way to get smuggled back into Dialtown would be just dandy, ma'am. If you were to know of such a way, that is. There may be security wandering around the perimeter of the town, watching for my inevitable return. So we'll need to get smuggled into town inside something inconspicuous. Hmm. I could take you back in a handbag. How? Granted, I don't normally carry, carry one of those around with me, so it might look a tad suspicious. Also, the handbag would have to be large enough to fit the both of you inside, which would almost certainly look suspicious. Oh, Lord. Just cram the two of us into a pair of old suitcases and call it a day. Do you seriously think that I'm going to wheel you both all the way into town? 
Asking me to lug just one of you back to town would be a ridiculous request, let alone the both of you. I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh... Come on, Carmel. Referring to me, referring to me as Carmel while simultaneously trying to gain a favor for me is quite a foolish strategy. You are aware. Also, what if those hypothetical gods were to stop me? What would I even say is contained with my, within my two massive pulsating grunting suitcases? If questioned, just say that you have miscellaneous cargo in them. Works every time. Your ideas stink for the record. Don't be rude to Logo. Oh, come on. You're hardly a walking beam of sunshine here. Don't be rude to Car uh, Karen. Logo and I go way back, and I'm not giving a total stranger... Uh, and I'm not the one giving a total stranger a rude introduction. In fairness, you were vocally repressed by, repressed, repulsed by me while, when we met. I feel that was earned, though. Alright, then. Genius. Think of another plan. We could dig a tunnel underground right into Dial Town. Fantastic plan. You definitely just want to die underground after a cave in. Agree to disagree, Norm. While Logo can almost certainly navigate underground at the speed comparable to your average mole, unlike the mole, Logo would almost definitely swallow all of the soil that they had cleared. They would definitely die underground, groaning and clutching their soil filled belly. No, Karen, he wasn't speaking genuinely. Norm was being sarcastic. Norm, I have to say, I find you to be an incredibly unlikable individual. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Oh, what? So my company's undesirable, but you find hanging around this green varmint to be just peachy? Logo was the first person to ever make me see my own value, I'll have you know. Oh, like this moron... I'm right here, you know... This moron convinced me to spread my wings and show my art to the world by destroying another art piece, but we'll get away from that. Logo taught me that ultimately you have to take responsibility for your own happiness because nobody else will. Huh. That's, uh... That's obvious, though. Well, do you... To me, you're just a cantankerous old coot happy to stew in your old bitterness. Hey, for your information, I'm not that old. Aren't you legally, like, a hundred? You're a dinosaur. No, I, I'm sure I'm legally dead by now. That ain't the same as being a hundred, you know. Well, people born a hundred years ago are legally dead now, statistically, so... The two aren't mutually exclusive. I hate three-way conversations. Wait. I know a way to smuggle you two into Dial Town. You do? Do you remember Oliver Swift by any chance? Do I? Uh, worked at the old cinema, co-runs a horror attraction now, you starred in a movie he directed say stuff like gnarly and groovy a lot. Uh, the name rings a bell, I guess? He wears a fez. Oh, Oliver, the Olive Man, yeah! There's been a lot of back and forth about me doing some commission work for him, you know, for his attraction. He wants something surreal and haunting and thinks I have the chops for what he has in mind. He re receives cratefuls of props on a weekly basis, so it wouldn't garner any suspicion if he were to receive another tonight, with you both inside. If I were to send you both to his attraction and pay for a courier to pick the crate up, you two would reach Uptown Dial Town in just under two hours. Karen, you are a genius. I can't thank you enough. If there's anything, anything I can do to return the favor. I liked it when you called me a genius. Genius, genius, you're a genius. Thank you. Alrighty, then. It appears we got a game plan. Actually, for your fair norm. I'll need something for you, from you first. Oh, so you're a stingy type, huh? Alright, my mom ain't raised me to expect nothing, something for nothing, so how much you want? Oh, no, I wasn't referring to financial compensation. Apologize to Logo. Hell yeah. No apology, no trip. Apologize for what? You called them a moron. Only I and certain Supreme Court justices have the authority to do that. 
Hey, I agreed to accompany them as armed backup, but I said nothing about providing pleasant conversation. Logo, do you really want someone like this accompanying you on your journey? Uh, sure he's a grouch, but he's a grouch with a gun. The cowboy stays. And you want that? What if he shoots somebody? Uh, if he shoots someone, he shoots someone. Well, what if someone shoots at me, Karen? You don't think they'd... I absolutely think they would. No, no. Uh, I'm sure they'd just squeeze you into another cat carrier. Yeah, as if. Do you know what the definition of insanity is, Missy? Don't call her Missy. Yeah, it's calling me Missy and expecting me and expecting to wake up on gas straight. <laughs> Get him, Karen! We might actually have to break this up into two streams. Jesus Christ. Is it? Is it spend an hour cr 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 cramming me into a cat carrier? Both of those definitions work, sure. I didn't expect this one to be so long. Now you. Apologize. No. Say you're sorry. Y you really think that's wise? Trying to issue commands to an armed man? Threaten my Karen one more time. I could destroy you and you know it. Uh. Logo. Um. I'm sorry Karen feels I've hurt your feelings. That's a fake apology. You! Alright, alright. I'm sorry I called you a moron, Logo. I shouldn't have said it out loud. Just in my head. Thank you. I think after this conversation, we'll call a stream and continue tomorrow. Because, like, I did not expect to go this long. Um, so yeah. And yes, that is the standard procedure for dealing with Logo's tomfoolery. I'm a lovable scout. I've got a spare crate to shove you both into. Just got to call all of us so he knows to expect you both. But wait. I'm unable to perform basic tasks. You have a printer head. Norm has a flesh head. Uh, that leaves us with nobody in our posse with a working phone head. To call Oliver, we'd have to hack into Dialtown's phone lines and... I mean, I could just call him on my cell phone. You, you could do that. You know, every single person in civilized society has one of these, right? Well, I don't. You're not in civilized society. Norm, you live in a shack and eat possum meat. I don't eat... Eh, uh, fuck. In fairness, Possum is succulent and gamey. Truly a working man's delicacy. I've seen you eat a Possum with tire marks on them, Logo. See? Alright, let's just get you two loaded into the crate before I change my mind. Karen, my ink-churning maiden, how could I ever make it up to you? Never again refer to me as an ink-churning maiden would be a wondrous start. All right. Okay. Let's save after whatever this scene is. You seeing this? You seeing this, bro? Yeah, bro. Imagine wearing both a cowboy hat and a NASA suit at once. Talk about a wardrobe malfunction, am I right? Yeah, and he's with Logo. Yeah, that too. We should probably let the man know about this. Uh, do we have to? What if she yells at us? If those two bozos find a way back into town, she'll do more than just yell at us, bro. Besides, if we manage to capture him, she might reward us. Handsomely. Uh, handsome reward for my handsome bro. Bro, do you think she'd let us pick a less clashing outfit for the Yeehaw Space Dude if we managed to capture him? Oh, hell yeah, bro. Let's ask, and if she says yes, we'll actually try this time. Okay, we're gonna save. Because we're getting into meteor scenes, and my voice is giving out again. So, we will definitely finish this game off tomorrow, regardless of how long it takes. Uh, 
So let's figure out someone to raid. It looks like Stopey's live. I'm gonna send you over to Stopey. Remember that you do represent our community, so be, you know, good. And I will see you tomorrow with the last Dialtown stream. I love you guys so much. Bye, guys.